Hi, this video is about finding the pH of diprotic acid solutions, and maybe even when you have one of the other forms of the diprotic acid that's been partially deprotonated. So how do we find the pH of those solutions, and how do we find the equilibrium concentrations of some of those species that might be in the solution? So we've got three forms for a diprotic acid. So diprotic acids can donate up to two protons. So the first form here on the left is the fully deep, the fully protonated form, where you still have both protons attached to the acid. If this were an amino acid, then we would have an overall plus one charge if we have both the carboxylic acid and the amino group protonated. So after we've donated one of the protons, we'll have the amphiprotic species, HA-. So amphiprotic just means that it could donate another proton or accept a proton to go back to the fully protonated form. So it can behave as both an acid and a base. Um, for an amino acid, we would have the Zwitter ionic form, where we have deprotonated the carboxylic acid, which has a minus one charge, but still have the amino acid, the amino side, uh, protonated, which would give that a plus one charge, but it would be neutral overall, plus one and minus one would cancel out. And then finally here on the right hand side is the fully deprotonated form, A2 minus. And again, if this were an amino acid, we would have an overall negative one charge once we have deprotonated both the carboxylic acid <clears throat> and the amino group. And this is assuming, of course, that the amino acid that we're not talking about one of those amino acids that has an acidic or basic side chain. Okay, so uh, let's work through one of these problems. So for each of these, there's a different set of approaches for solving um, that problem. So in the fully protonated form, um, we treat this as a weak monoprotic acid. So we're gonna assume that only the first proton comes off. The second one might come off just a tiny, tiny amount, but it's really not gonna affect the pH of our solution. So remember that that's all based on the Ka1 expression for uh, that acid. And so we could write the dissociation of the acid, and I'll do that here in just a minute. And um, this would be the equilibrium, the form of the equilibrium constant expression for this acid. So if we know the Ka1, and the Ka1 is associated with this reaction, so we start off with H2A, and then it's gonna dissociate, donate its first proton, and we're gonna be left with H plus and HA minus. So I need a minus charge up here, don't I? Very good. So that's our Ka1 expression. <clears throat> so treating this as a weak monoprotic acid, we would uh, fill out a rice table, so reaction, initial change, equilibrium. <clears throat> so initially, before any of the acid is dissociated, it has some formal concentration, and we don't have very many moles of the H plus or the HA minus. Now, this is only approximately true here. In fact, we have some H plus from the auto-ionization of water, assuming that water is our solvent. So that's gonna give us a little tiny amount, but as long as our formal concentration is reasonably big, you know, 10 to the minus three or 10 to the minus two or 10 to the minus one molar, so reasonably big, this is gonna be small compared to that and we can treat it as approximately zero. And so the chains, we're gonna lose some of our H2A because some of it's gonna dissociate and we're gonna form plus X moles per liter of each of the products. And so at equilibrium, we end up with F minus X, X and X. And then we would substitute this into our um, equilibrium constant expression that I've already written down there. And we get this expression, Ka1, whatever that value is, we would look that up, is equal to x squared over f minus x. And so what we wanna do is solve this for x. And once we know what x is, well, x is a couple of things. X is gonna be the uh, H plus concentration and X is also equal to the H A minus concentration. So we can, we can solve for both of those things. So once we know those two bits, and then to get the pH, we just take use our equation that the pH is the negative log of the H plus ion concentration, and we just found the H plus ion concentration because it's X, okay? Excellent, so um, how would we find the other species that might be present in our solution? Well, we might have some H2A still in our solution. What would that concentration be? Well, that would be F minus X. Finally, how do we find the concentration of A2 minus? Because there might be some A2 minus that's still 
in our solution having uh, fully dissociated, so given off two protons. Now again, that's pretty rare, but how might we figure out what that is? So we can figure that one out by using the Ka2 expression. So here's our Ka2 expression, and it equals um, H plus times A2 minus over H A minus. Now again, uh, this is kind of approximately true, but in fact we sort of know what the H plus concentration is, right? It's going to be a little bit higher than that because we'll get a little bit of dissociation from that second reaction. We know what our HA minus concentration is. It's going to be a little bit smaller than that because a little bit of it will dissociate. And we know what the Ka2 is, so we can solve then for our A2 minus concentration. So we just plug both of these in. And what you'll notice up here is that the H plus equals the HA minus concentration. So in fact, these just cancel out. And the A2 minus concentration is equal to the second acid dissociation constant. All right, so those are a whole bunch of equations that we can use to solve this problem. And we're going to go through and do an example of each of these um, in just a bit, where we have our uh, weak monoprotic acid, the fully deprotonated form. So for the amphoteric form, um, we have to treat this a little bit uh, in a more complicated way. So um, you can look this up in your textbook or a textbook. And um, we need to use the systematic treatment of equilibrium to find out what uh, this pH is. And so when we use the systematic treatment of equilibrium, we will get an expression for the H plus concentration. And it is this. It is the square root of um, Ka1 times Ka2 times F plus Ka1 times Kw divided by um, Ka1 plus F. Right, and we take the square root of this whole fraction here. So we have to take the square root of that whole fraction. OK, so we would know all these things. We would know our acid dissociation constants for our acid. We would know the formal concentration. So is it a 0.1 molar solution? Is it a 0.025 molar solution? Whatever. And then finally, uh, Kw, remember that is the water autoionization constant. And uh, Kw at 25 degrees Celsius is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So we have that value too that we know. So um, in most cases, um, this second term right here, Ka1 times Kw, is going to be pretty small. And also down here in the denominator, um, if we look at this bit right here, our uh, Ka1 term, is going to be pretty small, usually, compared to our formal concentration. So we can kind of ignore that. And then the formal concentrations would cancel out. And then we end up with an expression that's just H plus equals the square root of Ka1 times Ka2. And that gives us this expression, that the pH is approximately equal to 1 half of pKa1 plus pKa2. So this is a useful expression for uh, finding the pH of that solution. Um, what about finding out the concentrations of all of these other species? Well, we can use the, um, again, if we know the pH, we can always work backwards to find the H plus concentration. So that's just going to be 10 raised to the negative pH power. And um, to good approximation, our um, HA minus concentration is just going to be equal to the formal concentration. So we will assume that it doesn't dissociate very much. So it gives us very little uh, change to our, our pH. So it doesn't dissociate very much. So what you mix is what you get. So that's a good approximation there. So we can go ahead and use that as our HA concentration. And then how do we find the other concentrations, like the concentration, say, of H2A? and the concentration of A2 minus. How would we find those concentrations, at least approximately? Again, the best way to do this is to use the systematic treatment of equilibrium, but you know that's kind of tricky. So let's see if we can get by with some ways of doing that just kind of approximately. So to find this, this first one, we're going to use our Ka1 expression. So Ka1, we've already written that down, but I'll just recopy it. So it's H plus concentration at equilibrium times the HA minus concentration at equilibrium divided by the uh, H2 
2A concentration. And so if we look at all these, we know the Ka1 concentration, we know H plus, we know HA minus, and so we've got one equation, one variable in this equation, and so we can just solve that. To find this A2 minus species right here, we do the same thing, except we're going to use the Ka2 expression, which is H plus, and we know what that is already, because we used one of those first two equations to find that, and that's going to be A2 minus divided by the HA minus concentration. And again, we know Ka2, we know HA minus, we know HA plus, and we can solve for the A2 minus that we don't know just using algebra. So that's how we can approach that problem using all those equations. Finally, um, we are at the uh, fully deprotonated form. And so A2 minus is the conjugate base of this amphiprotic acid right here. And so it, in fact, acts like a base. And so we're just going to treat it as though it were a weak monoprotic base. And uh, so what does a base do? So a base accepts a proton. It will take that proton from water. And that will produce our amphiprotic species, HA minus, and hydroxide. And so there's a base hydrolysis constant associated with this. So this would be the KB1 taking its first proton. And that's going to be uh, the concentration of HA minus times the concentration of hydroxide over the concentration of A2 minus. Um, you may not be able to find the value of the KB1 in a table, but we can find the value of KB1 from uh, the Ka's. So we know that Ka times KB for its conjugate base is equal to Kw. So we can solve that, and we would see that KB1 is equal to Kw divided by the Ka2. Why is it Ka2 and not Ka1? Because Ka2 is the uh, equilibrium constant that relates the two species that are in our reaction. So if we look at this equation right down here, um, you see that these two equations are related by the Ka2, that these two unknowns are related mathematically by this equation right here. So that's why we want to use the Ka2 there. So again, Kw is the same value that we found over here. And so we can just plug that in and figure out the value of our Kb1. So how do we work this uh, weak base problem? Well, we're going to work it just the way we did with a rice table for our weak monoprotic acid. And so we're going to substitute um, the equilibrium E-line values into this equation. And we're going to get that Kb1 is equal to x times x, which gives us x squared divided by the formal concentration minus x, right? So x squared over f minus x. So it looks like the same expression, except we have to be careful. So what is x? So x is going to be the hydroxide ion concentration. And it is also equal to the um, HA minus concentration. So this might be something that we want to find. So to find the pH, then, we have to do an extra step. So we know from x what the OH concentration is. So we can find the pOH using this equation, that it's the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. And then we can use, at 25 degrees Celsius, the relationship that pH plus pOH equals 14. And if we solve that, we'll get that the pH is equal to 14 minus the pOH. And so that equation will let us solve for the H plus, uh, for the pH. And again, we can get the H plus ion concentration a couple of ways. We could do, uh, do it this way, that it's 10 raised to the negative pH power. Or since we know the uh, hydroxide ion concentration, the H plus ion concentration is just going to be Kw divided by the hydroxide ion concentration. So again, some different equations that we can use here to find the H plus ion concentration. So how do we find some of those other concentrations? Well, we know what the H plus is. We know what the HA minus concentration is. Um, the other two concentrations that we might want to figure out are the um, A2 minus concentration. So what is that? Well, that's just going to be F minus our x that we found above when we solved that equation for x. So that's how we could find that one. And then finally, how do we find the um, H2A concentration? Because maybe this A2 minus species has picked up two protons from water. And so there'll be a tiny little bit of that H2A concentration. And how do we figure that one out? 
So our KB2 equilibrium constant uh, expression is going to be uh, H2A equilibrium concentration times OH minus divided by the HA minus concentration. Uh, we know the value of KB2, or we can find it, because it is equal to KW divided by the KA1. So if we know the uh, KA value for our weak acid here, we can plug it into this equation. So if we look at this equation up here, um, we know the value of KB2. We know the hydroxide ion concentration. Uh, because we solved that equation, it's equal to x. The HA concentration is going to be approximately equal to x as well. And since those are the same, they're going to essentially cancel out. So the H2A concentration at equilibrium is just equal to the value of KB2. And so that makes it pretty easy to solve for, for that one. So that's how we can go through and solve for the uh, pHs and um, other chemical species equilibrium concentrations for a weak diprotic acid in any of its three forms. So we have these sets of equations. So um, in the next video, I will show you some examples of how we do each of these problems. And so we'll run through those. So stay tuned for that second video.